G'day, welcome to Pay It Forward. Now today I've just got a quick and easy demonstration video today, so no need for any patterns today. Um, I'm going to be showing you some more jointing techniques. Now a lot of you have seen my video about how I put my joints together for jointing my bears and animals. Um, I'm just going to show you a few other variations today so that you've got some choice there and of course there's some price differences there and, uh, and, and you may not be aware of some of these little techniques and uh, I want you all ready to be making my upcoming patterns. We're definitely going to be doing some little bears and so on which require some joints so let's get you all ready and all up to speed. So let me show you here a few of my favorite jointing techniques here today. So this is my preferred jointing method. It's a joint that I make up myself. I buy all of the components separately and I put it together myself. That way it's very inexpensive and I'm just using uh, hardware from your local hardware store and it's much cheaper. So there's a bit of gluing involved, but I do show you in a video I have, I'm gonna put the link up the top there, I have a video that shows you how I make these joints up and that's my prefer preferred method. So when I do any jointing or in any of my videos, this is the one I'm usually going to be using unless I'm particularly demonstrating an another method. And you can see uh, that I would need my spanner to be able to do up that little nut. So, but check out that video if you want to know about my method. So the next one I'm going to show you is one that you may not have seen before. So this is a really good substitute joint for if you don't have uh, joints at hand or can't find them or can't find the wooden discs. You can substitute those wooden discs for some nice large flat buttons. And they can be two hole or four hole, it doesn't matter. Um, you can see that's a 30 millimeter button, which is the same as one of my 30 millimeter wooden discs. So what I start with is my little button and I've got a doubled strand of extra strong thread. If you are jointing something for a child's toy, I would use four strands of extra strong thread. This is just for demonstration today. So I've taken that double thread through the back of that button, through the hole and back out again. So I have the button secured there. I haven't done anything else to it. And now I have a little sample head that I've got made up here. You can see there, just that little sample all filled with the drawstring already. Now, just as we would put our normal joint in the base of that neck, we do exactly the same with that button. And we're just gonna pretend that those threads are a bolt. And all we're going to do is tie up around that little joint just the way we normally do, normally would. Push that all in, make sure those threads are coming out central. And I'm just going to knot that off so that you can see how that looks. So there you can see my little button is all tied in nice and snug in there. And my two thread ends are coming out from that button there. Next step is that I thread all of those ends through a nice thick needle. So I've got also a little mock body here. So we're going to be adding a little head to this little mock body. So what we're going to do is just pass our needle through and bring it just all the way through. And we've got our our little head is going to be sitting on that body there. So I can remove my needle and I want to make sure that I've got my two thread ends here and I make sure that I take one pair and I'm actually just going to tie a knot in the end and that's just so I keep them separate from each other so when I go to tie off I don't accidentally grab one of one side and one of the other because then it won't tie off correctly. So that makes sure I'm not gonna mix that up. And now we're going to take one set of those thread ends. Through one side of our button. And then we take the other set through the other side.
and I can pull those in. Pull that one up and basically what I've created is the same thing as a little nut and bolt joint except that it's string instead of a bolt and I'm going to tie it off. So you can see there, I'm just holding that there. You can see that's got the lovely mobility of a joint. It's not, it, it will never be as strong, obviously, as a, a traditional bolt joint, but it's a great alternative. Now, all we need to do here is compress all those layers as much as we can. And we're just going to knot off on the back of that button about four or five times and then we're going to snip those thread ends and that will make our perfect little neck joint. So there you can see I've just tied off on that button. Hope you can see that there. Pull that one down and we've got that perfect little head attachment without having to buy any specialty joints at all. So and a lot of the projects that I give you I usually don't need joints larger than about 30 millimeters certainly not larger than your average uh, you know you sort of your largest button size i found those very easy to find um, in 30 millimeter but it's just a great alternative i think you'll agree and a lot of you have things like that on hand and i'm also going to show you another way to even create that for yourself so for now we've got our little head on and that's suitable and i am going to show you where i would use each of these joints in your work. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to look at cotter pin joints. Now cotter pin joints they come in a little pack like this usually you can purchase them you can get them from a lot of your local craft stores they come in packs in different sizes I always get mine from uh, my supplier here Teddy Bear Supplier in Australia I actually will put the link in the description box for you for that one just so you have somewhere to to find what you're looking for so cotter pin joints are made up of a two of the discs you've got a cotter pin as you can see little pin a washer cotter pin goes through and then we add the other one on the other side with a washer and then we wind down those little either side of that pin. So we're, we're just going to pretend that we're going to be adding a little arm here. Now the beauty of cotter pin joints is simply that you can add your joints and then stuff and close your little limb or whatever it is that you're adding to your project. So can see I'm just going in there from the underneath there's no need for gluing anything here and I'm just going to tuck that one in we've got our hole made there ready for our joint make sure that's all sitting nice and flat there so now what we could do we could go ahead and we could fill the rest of that limb close our opening which is much easier off your project to do um, and then you can have all of your little limbs made ready to attach to your bear because if you use grub screws or lock nut joints which are often available in teddy bear supplies you still have to keep everything open while you join your bear so that you can get into both sides of your joint hold one side while you tighten the other so I find that extremely difficult and annoying, um, which is why I came up with my own system. But a cotter pin joint gives you that same uh, freedom. So what we will do now is we will just push that little arm through and then we find, make sure everything is pushed nice and flat. We add our little disc on the other side and then we add our washer and now all we need to do is wind down those little pins now I'm just going to pull them apart just a little now a couple of ways you can do this you can use just your little needle nose pliers grab the top there and you just curl those pins down alternatively there are little tools that you can buy from teddy bear suppliers 
My husband actually got this one made up for me years ago because I do have trouble with my hands. A lot of you may. Um, if you do have trouble with your hands, cotopin joints may not be for you because we do have to wind those down. So you can see there, I'm just going to slip that little tool in there and then I can just wind that side down. And of course, it depends on the little project you're making. Some projects are tighter than others and you have more access to the inside of your project. So you can see I've wound that one down. It's just a matter of curling it down to as tight as you can. Flip it around and then we just repeat with the other side. It is easier with a little turning tool for sure than it is with needle nose pliers. But we use what we have. And I would definitely recommend that you invest, if you're going to be using cotter pins all the time, definitely recommend that you invest in a little turning tool like this. They're not expensive. So you can see they're both nicely wound down and then we have that little arm is perfectly joined there. Again, cotter pin joints will never be as firm as uh, your traditional nut and bolt. Um, you can only get them so tight, but they are very stable joint and they're fabulous for bears. And, and when you're making little bears that are just collectibles, not bears that are to be played with, you get a lovely little soft and floppy effect, which I actually really love. I love cotter pins for neck joints because it gives that neck and head more mobility. So definitely remember them for that. And often I will use my joints on all of the arms and legs and so on. And I will use a cotter, cotter pin joint in the neck just for that reason that there is a little bit more flex and you, you've got more posability. So um, that's your cotter pin setup. And uh, you can see it's really quite straightforward, but you do need to be using your hands a little bit more. So, and from there, our other options are our little acrylic joints. Now, these are usually available in craft stores, and you can see I've used them in one of my videos for my little bear. And they are just your piece that would go inside the arm, just like we did the, the cotter pin through the little hole and on the other side, we add that little clamp that clamps down. These are absolutely fabulous for arms and legs. Really, really good. Tricky for heads. You need a longer post. It can be done and definitely I've done it, um, but I would recommend a standard joint using a wooden joint or one of the techniques I've shown you today to add your little head. So now that we've got that, and we understand that about putting them together. Do remember that with your cotter pins, you can buy your cotter pins separately in packs. And of course your washers are available um, at uh, just at your hardware store and all of your teddy bear supplies will have all of these items for you. So if you want to use this little button method and you don't have any buttons that are large enough or can't find any that are large enough, you can go ahead and create your own, your own little joints. So you all know that I use mat board, picture framing mat board a lot. I love it and it's great for so many different things. So what I've done here is I've just cut out two little circles of mat board with my, I, I do it with scissors. You can use scissors on mat board. It's tough, but uh, it's doable. And I have measured up and created two little marks in the center, made sure they're nice and central and popped that through with my awl and then glued those two together using PVA white glue. Because it's a woodworking glue, what we end up with, a little disc that is absolutely every bit as strong as a wooden disc. So while it takes a little bit of time, it, 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 at least you can make it up with, often you've got materials at hand. Um, and that's very, very useful. So you can see there, I've just got my two little pieces cut. I put the holes through the first one, glue that one in place, and then I add, go straight through those holes to carry that on through. And then, of course, it's basically just a big cardboard button, and you can do that button technique with those. So 
I hope these these give you a lot more options um, and maybe take the fear out of um, having to buy so much product and so on. So I hope that helps you a lot. So let's have a look at where and how I would use these joints. So let's start with having a little look at my little deer here. Now she has so many joints in her, it's just not funny. Um, I've used those joints in so many ways. Now she has jointed antlers so that's uh, very handy. You can see the lovely clean finish. That's what jointing gives you. You don't see stitches. It's just a beautiful flush finish. Even her little ears there, they're actually jointed on. And of course her neck, her arms, she has multiple joints. She has elbows, knees and hips as well. But what I wanted to show you here was little projects such as her little mushrooms here. So she's got her little bag of mushrooms there and you can see that with a project like this, this little button joint, this one here, is perfect for this sort of little project. So you have to think outside of the box when you're jointing and when you're sewing simple little items, it's often easier to add a little button joint than it is to stitch something on because sewing this one on, the top of that to this stalk, would be quite challenging for anybody but if you have the top off and you've made your joint you add your filling and uh, tie that little section on then sew up the little top and that's exactly how I made those little mushrooms in all sorts of sizes and your buttons only need to be quite tiny as you can see there so that's one option so that's using that little button joint because it's an area which isn't a lot of stress. Obviously with a doll this size, the neck joint is my standard neck joint, but on your arms and your legs, you can go ahead and you could use a cotter pin. So entirely up to you. So that's with a big project. So we'll move little Miss Deer out the way. Another one for using the little button joints would be my little, uh, love bug she's coming up by the way I've had lots of requests for her she's looking she's been packed in a box for many years so her little antlers are very droopy never mind so this little neck joint again great for this little project here absolutely fabulous easy to get to the way that I put this one together and I may well actually use a little button joint in this tutorial so that you can really see how that one is done. So for a simple joint that doesn't take a lot of, it's not going to have a lot of stress or being played with because this is just a simple little shelf sitter, uh, then this is the way to go. And so we have another example here of using jointing. We're joining limbs here in this little, little pup here. We're joining limbs, but they're not for movement. They're just for, for adding, adding something to your project. So same with the tail. This joint here on the tail is not for movement. We won't be moving that little tail or those little legs, but it's such a lovely clean finish, which is why uh, a lot of people uh, just think joint, jointing is just for having swinging arms and legs, and it's not at all. You can add a hat with a joint. You can add something sitting on the top of his little nose there for a joint. You can add things to the body in so many ways that just make it all very clean and tidy and it's much easier than all of that labor intensive sewing so you can see there a simple little project like a little sad sack here now next i'm going to show you a couple of little uh, mohair puppies made in the same way because i do want to talk to you about mohair now i've had a lot of requests for mohair projects so I thought I'd have a little chat here today about mohair now I have only two little um, examples here because every mohair project I've ever made has always sold um, I kept these two intentionally they're part of little special tea sets that I make so this is a little poodle pup now she's put together and she has jointed again jointed rear legs she has a jointed tail and a jointed neck of course and as tiny as she is we still all use all those jointing techniques because it's easier again you can imagine sewing fur limbs onto a project is 
way way more challenging so joints just make sense but a lot of people have been asking and we've been talking about that just recently um, about uh, am I going to offer mohair patterns it's a whole nother genre um, and it's certainly more expensive for sure um, cost is an issue so leave it with me because I'm going to explore a few other options um, I'm always looking to make it um, affordable for you all um, and there may be some other uh, fabrics that I can use and perhaps introduce you into using something with pile to start with so because it is very specialized but this is the type of thing but I think we would be doing something nice and sweet and simple like that and we've got who else have we got here we've got a little tiny Shih Tzu puppy here too just made with a longer length and really quite simple using those joints is, is really quite simple with a little project like this and once you know how to work with fur um, you can make some lovely little characters so I'll definitely look at that um, but I won't be doing anything that is going to be extremely expensive for you all so I hope you've enjoyed seeing these and uh, leave it with me to have some thinking about what I can present to you in this way and uh, I hope you're looking forward to stepping up and uh, I certainly hope I've taken some of the mystery out of jointing for you. So thank you all for joining me today. Well that's it from me today. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope it's given you some hints and tips that you can really use in your own work. I am going to be taking off now and uh, getting stuck into some more design for you all. I have included some bloopers and outtakes at the end here so if you want to stay and watch till the end and have a little laugh at me go right ahead a laugh is good so enjoy yourselves and make sure everybody stay safe pay all of those great things forward and until next time it's Huru from me I hope you've re really enjoyed this one I certainly have and um, that was what am I saying now? Nothing. And coming up, I am going to add to this series because it is just a great little series to give us gifts and so on. Look absolutely fabli fa fabulous, fabulous, look fabulous. Come and have a look. I've put the link in the description box below again. And I'm choking. <sighs> to your creations that you've made. Oh, shut up. Shut up. Most of all creative. And until next time, make sure you pay all of those good things forward. And next time, hooroo. Oh, hooroo. Hooroo.